In this video, I'd like to look at uh, CSS and sort of grid styling. So there's sort of a fair amount to it and it takes some getting used to. So this will be uh, a first a try and then we might do more in the future, we'll see. I decided to try to recreate a painting, a composition by uh, Piet Mondrian uh, as a way to sort of push myself to, to uh, create a, a interesting grid. So the code for this uh, example can be found at the URL seen here. So here's the page that this uh, that I'm creating, and the first uh, the first thing here is an image of uh, Piet Mondrian composition. Um, so he did these sort of geometric designs in pretty sort of solid colors. And I'm using that over mostly overall shape to try to push myself to sort of create a grid with more or less the same. I could have pushed it a little bit further, but the sort of point where you, you sort of stop learning stuff about grids and just are recreating, I didn't want to go that far. So um, this was sort of good enough for me and I put the numbers in here to sort of tell myself what grid I was in. So of course those numbers aren't in the uh, Piet Mondrian obviously. Okay so that's what it looks like and so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven divs. So we're going to have uh, some a bunch of divs with this grid styling and some individual work on maybe these specific seven. Okay, so above I have the styling, but here is the HTML. So it's mostly about the CSS. Here's the HTML, the body of the HTML. Uh, I've got the header. I've got my little paragraph. I've got my image. Um, I gave the image a specific width. I let the, the height sort of scale accordingly. Um, and then I have my a div, which I'm going to specify as the container of the other divs, and then my uh, the seven divs that you saw. So there's a container div, and then seven overall divs, and I gave them a class so that any styling that is going to apply to all of them, I will apply to the class, and then I've given each of them an ID, so the sort of the specifics to a given rectangle will be applied by the using the pound sign. So the class, the styling will be based on the dot, which will specify in CSS class. And uh, when you see a pound sign or a hashtag, uh, we will be styling by the ID. Okay. So here is up in the head, the style. So for the grid container, we specify that it is uh, an inline grid. So the inline part, so grid is mostly what we're talking about, but inline grid means that it can share, what inline usually means is that it can share uh, the line with other things. And that's, so we're styling, what we're styling is a div and divs usually like to be alone on the line. So by specifying an inline, that is going to mean that it will share with other things. And that you, we saw that it was on the same line with the image. Um, I'm specifying a width, overall width. And down here I have, and you, you can in CSS have variables and do calculations and maybe I will show that another time. But here I'm just, uh, specifying a width, and then here is my calculation. I'm going to work with uh, columns and rows in this grid, um, and I'm thinking of myself as having nine columns of a width 45, and, uh, and then there will be, between those nine columns, there will be eight gaps, and those gaps will be 10 pixels. So that is my calculation here to get my 485. 
I'm specifying here that I'm going to have uh, the columns that they're going to be uh, 45 pixels. So I'm specifying a width of my columns and, uh, and they're going to be nine of them. I did the similar thing with rows and in the rows I said I'm going to have eight and that they're going to be 45 pixels. My overall color is going to be black for the container. And the only place you see the black, well, I think you see the black in the gap. I don't think I've styled the gap color. Um, so I think the black is seen showing through in the gaps and then there's this thin so i don't know maybe my calculations off by a pixel or two somehow um you see this this uh, line on the edge here on the right edge so that, i think that's where we're we're seeing my background color of my grid container which was black my grid gap now you can specify a, a different horizontal and vertical gap, but I did not, but one can. Um, but so the, the, both the horizontal and vertical gaps are uh, 10 pixels. The border width, this is for the container. So the border sort of goes sort of outside of the box. So this, I'm going sort of 10 pixels outside of the box, solid, and it's this sort of like, off white color. Um, and that was, so that is, you see a very sort of light gray here going around. And the, and the sort of, in the image of the Piet Mondrian composition sort of had the same. So that's why I put it there. Um, that's not in the, in the calculation, the border sort of extends, it's, it's a little bit browser dependent, but it often extends outside of the box. So that was, so those were the border. And then the vertical line top sort of also went along with the inline. If I had not said uh, that, um, and that's not the usual styling. Very too many browsers up here. So to get the sort of top of my image and of my grid to uh, sort of start in the same place. So sharing the same line doesn't mean that the, the top's align or the bottom's align, that you have to sort of uh, work at that. So this was not the default alignment, but I had to, to make it align so that they, uh, I wanted them to sort of both start at the same level at the top and then work their way down. Okay, um, here's the styling of a, of all the sort of shared styling. I gave them all a black background that uh, hopefully I don't think we will see. Um, I think we saw a little bit of the containers black background, but I don't think we're seeing any of the grid items back background. Um, and you can play with the colors and, and see if you are or aren't. Um, remember that the cells had these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think it was, um, or was it seven? It was only seven. Uh, so this is the size of the, the font of those, and they are put sort of at least horizontally in the center. Okay. It's difficult to work with them vertically because as you as we're going to see below we're going to start spanning rows and columns so then the, the middle becomes uh difficult to define and with text it's always a little difficult to define the the center uh, vertically horizontal is easy vertical is a little more difficult so i just sort of skipped it okay so here's the first a uh, rectangle, that's this uh, white one on the upper left. And this one says, I, I had, if you recall in my container styling, I said that I'm going to have nine columns. So um, 
what this grid row one slash four, and we need the spaces around the slash. Uh, that was a mistake I was making at one point, not giving some space. So the one space slash space four indicates that this uh, rectangle is going to start in row one and go up to and not include row four. So it's going to go, it's going to cover three rows and uh, so we're working here with sort of uh, the counting starts at one. Um, so this is CSS. Uh, so I'm sort of in programming, I'm used to counting starting at zero, but the counting here starts at one. And the first one is where we're starting. And then the first, and then the second number is the first number that's not included, if you want. So we're going, going to have one and two and three, but not four in, in our rows in rectangle one. And the columns are going to be one and uh, three, uh, one, one and two, but three is not going to be included. And it is this uh, sort of white, very whitish color. Um, so that was here. And you could say, I could play with the columns and just say this was one column of a given width. And then, so that's a different way that you can play is I just have all my columns the same width and then I'm playing with nine columns and spanning columns and spanning rows. But another possibility here would be to say uh, this column, then to say that this is just one column wide and then give it a specific number of pixels for its width or percentage or something like that. So a different way to work, but I worked in a way where sort of the the rows and the columns were my rough my rough unit of forty five, and then I said to get this sort of rectangular shape taller than it is wide, I made it span two columns and three rows. So this could be done a different way, but this is the approach I was taking. Okay. Rectangle two was the red one. So I sort of, I, I was working with them sort of as I, I read. So I started in the upper left and then I, and moved left and then, and then moved down. And so in that approach, the next thing I encountered was two. And that went over, uh, Sorry, I switched to a, a span notation here. So if I say one slash four, that means I start in one in column one, and then I go up to and not including four. If I use the word span, that's telling me how many uh, units to include. So this says I'm using six rows. So rectangle two, the red one, is going to span six rows. So it's just, those are just two different notations to achieve the same thing. This one, I told you where it starts and, and the first thing not included. Whereas when I use the word span, I'm telling you how many units. So this is going to have six rows. And then in terms of columns, it's going to start in column three and span seven. So re rectangle one in terms of columns went from one and two and did not include three. So that was two wide. And down here, I made this one seven wide and thus altogether nine. So I was at the edge of my uh, grid there because I said I had nine columns up above in the container and its color was red. And um, 
sort of match these. I think I used the uh, like an eyedropper over on the Mondrian to sort of pick up uh, the red and the blue and the and so on to to get these you know hex codes. Now the Mondrian is fairly uniform, um, but not completely uniform. So it sort of depends where you where you put the eyedropper when you do it. Um, okay. So this is my third rectangle, and that is this one. And so it's going to have a similar uh, column and row span as one. It's just in a different, starting in a different place. So it's going to go, I went back to the begin and end notation. So in terms of rows, it's going to go start in four, go four, five, and six, and not include seven. So I'm in the... Uh, I didn't use the word span here. So it's four, five, and six. Don't include seven. So that's spanning three rows. And here the same a span of the same columns as rectangle one and uh, the white color. The fourth rectangle is the blue one. One, two, three, four now. And in terms of rows, it went from seven and eight. There's sort of there was no nine, or or the nine is the sort of the end. Um, so we're going row seven and eight. We're doing columns one and two, and it has a blue color. Uh, rectangle five is a white one, sort of going across the bottom here. Here's five. So we said that in terms of rows, that was seven, nine, the same as four. And then uh, for columns, it went from uh, three and didn't include nine. So up to, went to three, it did not include uh, nine. Oops, sorry. And it was a white rectangle. Number six is a small one on the right-hand side. So in terms of rows, I mean, I didn't need to say seven slash eight here. I could have just said seven. I just got, I was sort of doing a copy and paste. Uh, so, it's a little bit of overkill here. It only is in one, this one's only one row and one column. So I could have just said seven, nine, but I was sort of copying and pasting. So it had, I already had the notation. So I, I kept it um, and it was this white. And then the last one was the yellow seven at the bottom and made that, um, it was in row eight, in row eight, and in column nine, and it had this yellow color. And now we're down to the end of the style and the beginning of the body. So that's what I wanted to show you, just this idea of a grid and this possibility for cells to uh, expand to other columns. Uh, so this, even if I had, uh, not made, I sort of made these six and seven sort of my unit and then worked in terms of that, but I could have just had wider, uh, wider, some of my columns wider than others. Um, but even so, I still would need some spanning to get this a uh, red because it certainly covers two rows. And then, and it, uh, even if I had varying width columns, it expands uh, multiple columns. And this uh, same thing here, the blue and the four, blue four and the white five span more rows than six, seven. So even if I had played with variable rows and columns, I would still need this idea of spanning that uh, the grid, per, grid styling provides. So that's what I wanted to show you at uh, this stage. Thanks very much for your attention.